Okay, so Proverbs 7 says, My son, keep my words and uh, treasure my commandments within you. Keep my commands and live. Um, and my law as the apple of your eye. Okay, bind them on your fingers, write them on the tablets of your heart. Say to wisdom, you are my sister, and call understanding your nearest kin, that they keep you from the immoral woman, from the seductress who flatters with her words. Okay, um, so we see uh, the importance of keeping the word of God. Okay, uh, or words of wisdom, which come from the word of God. Um, it says, keep my words. What does it mean to keep? It means to uh, um, to treasure it. It means to um, to obey. It means to uh, it means to make sure that you're holding on to it. Okay, that's what keep. Is it no? You if I you're saying I kept it, which means that you're careful about it and you're not letting go of it. Right. So that's keep. So the, the the same verse says, treasure my commands within you. So which means you're keeping it as something very very precious. You're treating it as a treasure, as something which is precious, as something of great value, as something that is not common. Right. So you're keeping it. You're treasuring it, and um, and he says, and my law as the apple of your eye. You know, when uh, the apple of your eye. You know, again, this analogy is like if somebody, you know, if comes to hit you, hit your eye, you immediately cover it, right? Uh, so you you keep God's word as the apple of your eye, as His law as apple of your eye, and it says, you know, bind them on your fingers, write them on the tablets of your heart. Meaning, you know, wherever you can or whatever possible method you want to use, um, you make sure that you're reminded of God's word, that you're reminded of his law, that you're reminded of the standards of God's word. And the reason is this, the whole chapter, if you read, you know, it's, about, uh, it's about protection, um, protection from harm. Protection from and and typically just talking about immorality and um, you know protection from temptation and so on and and I'm sure that it applies to all other you know areas for us to make the right choice uh, for us to um, you know prevent us from making the wrong choices and for that this should be my my engagement with the Word of God I, so I should treasure it. Uh, I should make sure that hey, I'm reminded of the Word of God, so which means that I, you know, Word of God is very central to my life, uh, to one's life. Right? It, it needs to be central. You know, our life needs to be word-centric. Our whole everything, everything is guided by the Word of God. Uh, our standard is uh, derived from the Word of God, um, and we uh, treasure the Word of God. We value the Word of God. Uh, esteem it very highly, right? So when we do that, there is a sure, short protection uh, against making bad choices, right? And uh, and falling down. And it talks about you know the consequence of that, and uh, you know, it's it's really you know not a pretty picture when you look at that, right? Um, so that's the thing, right? So as um, ministers, as communicators of God's word, um, you know, if we would do this, uh, it, we'll do well. Right. So let's just pray and say, Lord, you know, uh, change my heart about Your Word. Change my heart about other, um, you know, the way I treat Your Word, um, uh, and how I esteem Your Word. You know, may I learn to treasure it. May I learn to honor Your Word, God. Uh, truly, it is my protection in this world. Right? Let's pray. Father God, we, we just want to thank you for these words that we just read, and um, we thank you for the instruction there, Lord. I pray that uh, you give us the grace and that we will, Lord, obey it, Lord, um, wholeheartedly, fully, O oh God, that we may learn to keep your word in our hearts, that we may learn to treasure your words, your commands in our hearts, Father God, that we may learn, O oh God, to be reminded, Lord, of your commands, of your words, Lord, at all times, Father God, um, for truly, Lord, your word is our protection, Lord, from all forms of uh, temptation. And uh, really, it's, uh, it's a shield, oh God, a shield of faith. It comes from the faith that is generated from your word, God. We thank you. And Master, we pray that, um, that as believers, as communicators, as spokesperson of the truth, oh God, that you've called us to be, um, that this will be our... Um, 
our engagement with your word, Father God, because this would be how we treat your word, Father God. We thank you. We give you all the praise and all the glory at this time. In Jesus' master's name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, awesome. So um, last class, we will, we've been looking at um, sermon preparation, right? Uh, sermon construction. And uh, I hope you filled in that um, uh, page. Uh, let me just go there quickly. Um, Okay. 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 Um, so sermon titles, topics and titles. Okay. So the link is there and uh, it's in that Google sheet. You just have to click on that sheet, go there. And um, okay. So three people have filled in. Um, others you can fill in. Okay. Um, right. Okay. Wonderful. So um, you think about it, and you, you, uh, it'll be good if you can think think about this over the weekend and fill it up. Okay. So let me. Um, I hope you know where uh, to find the sheet. Right. Um, it's there in the um, uh, stream. It, it has come as a prompt, as an assignment. So you fill that out. Uh, let me just show you that uh, tab. Um, so you click on that link, and you'll go there. So this is what you see. Um, so your name, you enter your name there, and then uh, the sermon topic and the title. Okay. So hope all of us understood the difference between the uh, the topic and the title. Right. So sermon topic is the subject, um, but broadly speaking, it's like the subject that you're going to be talking about, and the title brings a lot more focus to what is the message about. Okay. So that's the difference. Um, so. OK, so Rosalyn is asking, um, uh, after filling, when to upload the video of the sermon? OK, so uh, I'll, uh, again, put out a prompt. And you'll have sufficient time to um, you know, like record the video of the sermon and then put it up. OK, so, so we'll go through this whole thing of sermon construction. Uh, we'll go through some uh, important aspects of it. And we'll also, uh, so you can actually keep adding to it. So what I would suggest is you can, you know, maybe open a Word doc or, or you know, even in your notebook, you can keep adding, you know, as we learn, as we get insights, you can keep adding to the outline, and um, and then you know you can further refine it and keep it ready, and then uh, you can, you know, uh, I'll I'll put up, okay, what is the time that is required, timeline that is required. You'll have sufficient time to record it and then upload it. Okay, so I can. See. Yeah, textual sermon would be how um, the uh, yeah. So actually, what, what I've said is it can be either a textual or a topical. So a textual sermon, you know, um, the topic, the, the the topic and the title would be the same. Uh, same in the sense, uh, you know, let's say, for example, uh, yes, what does uh, John Paul put? OK, John Paul has said um, importance of eternal life. What does it uh, and where does it take us? Um, and then sermon title is Zoe, the God kind of life. Now, for John Paul, it can either be a, a topical sermon where he's talking about the you know, Zoe, God kind of life, or it can be a textual sermon. He can actually pick up a text and say, OK, uh, the whole sermon is based on that text. So that's fine, absolutely okay. Okay, sermon duration. Um, sermon duration. Let me just think about it. I think we have about uh, twelve of us here right now. In today's class, uh, twelve students. Um, so I just need to think. I think maybe we can look at five minutes, uh, or maybe ten minutes maximum. So it's going to be a short time. Uh, ten minutes, which means maybe uh, five people can. Uh, four people can actually comfortably present, and then you know uh, when they um, uh, so once they do that, uh, I'll also think you know whether we need to upload a video, upload a, because if the more the people, I think it's going to be difficult to present in class, so it makes sense to upload the video. Um, so let me just think about it and let you know, right? Okay. I hope that's okay, Rosalind. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so for today, let's. Um, so we looked at uh, the topic, we looked at the title, and we also looked at um, what all goes into the title. You know, that's where we stopped last class. Um, 
we looked at the, the fact that the title is um, you know it, it can serve as an advertisement to the message it can actually stir up the curiosity um, of the of the of the person and uh, it actually provides a good uh, tone for the message okay and um, we also saw that because of uh, you know, today's technology and the way technology is used, it'll be it'll be good if we can come up with a I mean a very good title which actually intrigues um, the the one who is surfing the net, who is looking at different social media, and also something that accompanies a very arresting graphic, right? So, uh, a very uh, arresting picture, visual um, that would also help. Okay, uh, so the visuals would actually not be off-putting, you know, in the sense uh, it should not turn off the person, but actually, uh, you know, uh, uh, kind of stir up their curiosity and say, okay, let me just check what this message is about. So it would help. Okay. So we looked at the guidelines, um, and the last one we saw about the title was that it uh, it can be in the form of a question, right? And it can be a question, a phrase. Um, and uh, so that would be helpful. Okay. Um, let's move on. The next one is in the sermon. There is this. If you, if you say, okay, there are parts of the sermon. The next one could be the introduction. Okay. Um, like I'm sure most of you would have. I mean, you. It comes to you naturally. But we're just addressing it so that um, you know, for those of us who have not really used to it you know this can be one thing which they learn and you know put to practice so um so you prepare the heart and mind of the people to secure the interest of the people uh, with the introduction so the introduction is a very short um, you know span of time it could be maybe three minutes it could be maybe two minutes um, maximum of five maybe um, so it prepares the audience so whatever you say during the introduction it prepares the audience for the message um, it is it is important but it's important that it it also should not be very lengthy. Okay, if the introduction goes on and on and on. People are thinking, okay, when is he going to start the message? And finally, you know, maybe after fifteen minutes, okay. So today's message is about, and you already lost the, you know, audience. They're like, oh, so all that you spoke just now was not the message. Oh, well, now it's going to be another lengthy message. So you know, so keep it uh, keep it short. Um, it need not be long. Okay. Um, so when you start uh, an introduction, if it is highly impactful, uh, people stay, stay with you, stay on to hear. Okay, so uh, it's important the, those opening comments. You know what you're going to be speaking, what you're going to be sharing. Um, it's it, it can be very very simple, of course, um, but it can actually help people to stay on, help people prepare their hearts to receive, uh, prepare their minds, be receptive um, to what you have to say, right? So the introduction. OK, um, so the uh, good introduction will introduce the main theme of the sermon. OK, so uh, last Sunday we looked at, um, the, you know, we've been looking at the series Faith and Science. Uh, in 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 all the APC locations, so uh, it was about faith and science, and the and the and the topic or the title for the message was "Can Science Explain It All?" You know, does science have uh, have it uh, to explain all the things? You know, all the answers. Does science have all the uh, answers to the life big questions? So, so that is what we were looking at. So, in the introduction, uh, you know, we, we we just talked about what science does, what faith does. And uh, does science have all the answers? A very short introduction, and then we went into the body of the message, right? Um, the the impact of the introduction can even have an impact on the uh, the end of the message, in the sense how people are receiving it. Okay, towards the end, are they staying on till the end? Are they in a place to receive? Uh, you know, all that will depend on the introduction. Okay, so um, it will really help to prepare well. Right? Um, we're going to look at you know the end also. Uh, many times we prepare the introduction well, but then we, we the closing, the conclusion. Sometimes we just leave it, right? We just kind of trail off. So uh, what I've also learned by experience is that the conclusion needs to be thought of. Conclusion needs to be prayed through. And uh, you know uh, what are you going to do with it? Ask God, God, how do you want me to finish? Right. So that's also important. Okay. So um, 
so use all this. So you can use creativity, you can use variations, um, you can use illustrations, uh, you can use quotations, uh, personal experience. Um, you know, I'm sure you've heard some people start by saying, you know, um, as I was preparing, as I was in prayer, you know, some people start that way, or as I was on the way to the church, or some people start with humor, okay, with, with, a, with a joke, with a, with a good uh, joke. And that also helps people relax. Maybe people are all, you know, kind of stressed out or they're uh, preoccupied with different things. You can also start with, uh, a, a, you know, a good joke. But the problem is if the joke falls, you know, if people do not get the joke and they don't laugh, then it's going to be double the effort to recover from that place and get back onto the message. So you should be aware of that. You know, uh, as a speaker, are you, are you, you know, comfortable making jokes? Like how, how do you, you know, normally in your, everyday conversations do you are you okay making jokes or is it something very very foreign to you right something that you're not comfortable with then think twice you do have to do something that you're comfortable with don't get into that territory of you know um, uh, humor at all uh, for the start okay so it can even be poems it can even be short stories it can be the text of the sermon itself okay these are some suggestions you know um let me just uh, see if i have a uh, a poem um, that one of the speakers I know noted it down because it's very interesting, and um, and he has many uh, poems like this about God's word, okay, about the word of God, and he shares that during his okay here it is, okay so he shares that um, you know in any every uh, each of his messages so let me just read it out to you okay so it's called uh, my precious old book and it's by dr chris nyanakan um, let me read that out okay this is how it goes though the cover be torn and its pages be worn and places bear tears traces of tears yet more precious than gold is this book worn and old that can shatter and scatter my fears as I prayerfully look in this precious old book, many treasures and pleasures I see, many promises of love from my Father above, who is nearest and dearest to me. This book is a guide, is a friend by my side. It will lighten and brighten my day. And each promise I find soothes and gladdens my mind as I preach it and teach it each day. To this book I will cling, of its worth I will sing, though many crosses and losses be mine. For I cannot despair, though surrounded by care, while possessing this blessing divine. Okay, uh, so uh, I've heard like two, three, he's got two, three of the same thing. And then he actually, uh, he's a brilliant orator, so he actually says it by heart. Okay, he doesn't have notes. Uh, I mean, notes for this particular thing. He, of course, he has notes for the outline. But uh, this he just pulls out from his heart, and uh, it's a very you know you can't help but hang on to every word. It's very moving. It's about the word of God and what the word of God means to him, and and so on. Right. So, um, so something like this. Right. You could have an anecdote. You can have a uh, and and try it out. Okay, so you make a note of it, okay, in your outline introduction. Okay, how are you going to start? You know, you saying you're talking, going to talk about um, the love of God. Um, are you just going to say today I'm going to talk about the love of God? Or are you going to think creatively and introduce the love of God? Uh, in it, right, uh, talk about it. So think about it, pray about it. It doesn't have to sound uh, artificial. Okay, it needs to be natural. It doesn't have to sound uh, very gimmicky, you know what I mean? Like uh, like a gimmick, like a trick um, thing. And uh, so when it sounds very gimmicky, when it sounds very contrived, no? um, the audience uh, sometimes feels very insulted. You know, it's like, hey, what, I, what is this person trying to do? You know, they're not kind of respecting. It just feels, they feel a little uncomfortable, insulted. So, um, so you don't have to do that. It depends, again, about the, uh, the you know, who's the audience that you're addressing who are you addressing right uh, if it's a young uh, a young group if it's a youth group you can just basically start with an activity okay everybody stand up 
right? Or everybody try touching your toes, something like that. Right? You can start with an activity, uh, and that'll that'll go well. Okay, and hopefully, you're tying that activity to the you know whatever you're sharing, so uh, it just flows together. Okay. Um, sometimes pre-introductory comments are required. Okay, so for example, maybe you're a guest speaker in a place. Um, you know, sometimes you, if, if that is the case, you would have to, you know, acknowledge whoever's invited. Uh, maybe thank very quickly, and also, you know, I'm, I'm sure you've heard. You know, I bring greetings from such and such a church. You know, uh, there's a traditional, you know, thing that you heard. I, I bring greetings from my home church, um, etc. They say so. Maybe some pre-introductory thing. Uh, maybe an introduction about yourself. You know, you're a total stranger to the audience, so uh, it'll help if you say something about yourself. I'm so and so. I'm doing this, and maybe the person who int introduced you. Uh, just introduced your name and said, okay, this person is from this place and he's going to be sharing or she's going to be sharing the word. So you might have to uh, uh, introduce yourself, say a little more about yourself. So that would be a pre-introductory, uh, you know, that face, right, stage where you share something, say, uh, make some comments, um, thank people, acknowledge, and then you uh, go on with a message. Okay. Um, everybody okay with that, right? Fine. So you make a note of it, you got the title, you got the thing, and you think about, okay, how, how am I going to present this now, okay? Okay, then we have the proposition, okay? Now, before we get into it, I just want to say this is a guideline, okay? This is a guideline. Now, it has all these parts. This is a guideline. And it will help if you have this, right, but not necessary. Okay, so um, definitely the title, the introduction, those things are mandatory. Okay, now what we're going to look at uh, are some things which will give shape to the outline, will give shape to your message. So it'll help. Okay, so it's not like chapter and verse, I need to have a message like this. It's not like that. Okay, so this is the proposition. So, what is the proposition? It's a declaration about the subject. Okay, this is what we want to discuss, this is what we want to look at, this is what we are going to cover. Uh, in the next 30 minutes and so on. It's, so it's just one statement about the main theme. Okay, um, So, uh, you know, post the introduction, you could just say, make, you know, today we're going to look at five things that move the heart of God. Something like that, you know. Today we're going to look at five things. We're going to look at six things, um, you know, that are detestable to God's heart. Or something like that, you know, the, the the main theme of what the message is. So it's like a, it's a proposal, it's a proposition that covers that, okay? Uh, so it's the big idea. What is this whole message about? It's this. So when you make that proposition, uh, it would cover that, right? Okay. So here are some guidelines, okay? Um, uh, so there's this big idea which you're talking about which you're uh, stating, it covers the entire concept of the sermon. So the thing is to think out, okay, what is it um, that I am actually presenting? It's very difficult actually to, you know, to summarize everything, you know, to com compress everything in one sentence. It takes time. And what is it that you're going to cover in this, in this message? You know, for example, uh, okay, uh, I'll just take some uh, example from here. Okay, let's say uh, destroying the foundation. Okay, that's a sermon topic. And then youth and violence is the sermon title which Isaac has put down. So, so in one line, I, I need to be able to, you know, summarize and say, today we're going to look at this, this, this about the young people in our generation, what moves them, the environment that, you know, etc. I'm just saying, uh, what moves them into violence, what triggers that, how can we, you know, help, and how do we contribute to that with our indifference, whatever. And um, what is the solution? Right? We're going to look at that. And you need to kind of, it'll help if you can word it in the right way, put it in a way so that it covers everything. And then people, uh, okay. I'm curious now. I need to be looking at. I need to. Um, I, I want to know more about this, right? Sorry. So, um, so it gives the big idea. Okay. Then, 
the sermon is the explanation, interpretation, application that you draw from this idea. Okay, so whatever you're going to share, uh, what you're going to be uh, giving uh, from then on, right, is uh, is going to be the the fleshing out of it, the descriptor, the descriptors of it. Okay, so let's look at uh, two essential elements in the statement of an idea. Okay, one is the subject, which answers the question, "What am I talking about?" Simply put. Okay, so for us to come to that pr proposition, put to put together the proposition, this question would help us. Okay, what am I talking about? Okay, and uh, the second question is, what exactly am I going to say about what I'm talking about? Okay, you get it. Um, so first one is, what am I talking about? Okay, you present that. What exactly am I going to say about what I'm talking about? So uh, this will help us form that. Uh, you know the big idea, and uh, and state the proposition. Okay. Um, now the second one is uh, it's connected. Now we we've stated the proposition. We've uh, stated the big idea. Now we we need to move on to um, uh, to the sermon. You know, actual sermon to the outline of the sermon. So normally, you know, we would say something like a something to transition from here to there okay which could be maybe a question okay uh, and now now you know so you can ask a question so what is it that really causes this problem and you go into that right so it could be a transitional sentence okay again uh, it's a guideline uh, it's uh, something that you can use um, so you can say you know why does this happen in our times, why is it that more and more, uh, you know, homes are breaking down? Why is it that this problem is there in society today? Right, something like that. And uh, you know, what, when, you know, you can use those inter interrogative uh, uh, words: why, what, how, when, where. Think about that, and use it uh, as a trans transition sentence from uh, transition to transition into the outline. Right. Okay. So there's an example here. Um, like, for example, let's say the title is an exemplary ministry, and it's from One Thessalonians two. Okay. Uh, it talks about okay, this is how it one one needs to be, uh, etc. The servant God, servant of God, has to need his have has to have these qualities, etc. Um, so the pro the proposition could be this: the big idea is this. Um, the servant of God has an exemplary pattern or an example for his ministry uh, in the word. Okay, so if you need an example, if you need a pattern, it is right there in the word. You're holding it in your hands. Then an interrogative sentence that trans uh, can be, uh, or the transitional sentence could be: What are the characteristics of this pattern? What are the characteristics, and where can we find them? And then you go into that. Um, so the transitional sentences, according to one personal institute. Now these are, you know, these are things that we do naturally, right? We don't uh, think about this too much, but the reason that we are looking into it is that um, uh, you know sometimes we miss out on it. Okay, sometimes what happens is we 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 could miss out on it, and it will help. Okay, is my message having that? It'll help to think. Okay, uh, how do I transition there? Because it help. It'll help the listener because we're taking the listener on a journey. We're taking the audience on a journey, and it'll help them to make that transition transition quicker. And we're doing all this because we don't want anything to hinder the listener from receiving. Okay, we're just removing all the roadblocks. We're making sure that it's all smooth, so uh, the impact is uh, is high. Impact is better. Right? Strong. Okay. Uh, so then we move on to the outline of the sermon. Okay, so the outline. Uh, what are some of the, um, the the main thoughts? So the outline has some main points. Outline could have some sub points to those main points. Um, so it's good to get those get that out, outline organized. Okay. So um, so how does one do it? You know, many people have different methods. Like some people just keep writing down. Okay, uh, okay, 
as I pray, as I meditate, I get this thought, I write it down. Okay, as I pray, as I meditate, okay, there's some new revelation about this. I, you know, you write it down. And then you categorize it, okay, um, put it together. That's one thing. It's a bit chaotic, right? But uh, that also is fine. Uh, or it's very structured right from the start. Okay, you're, you're thinking, Lord, okay, God, what next? What next? What next? What are those five things that I need to share? Okay, I have only one thing here as a main point. Um, uh, are there anything... Uh, 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 can I share anything more about this this main thing that I've shared? Uh, uh, maybe three more things that I can share within that main point. Uh, what is it, Lord? You know, you're waiting, you're asking God, and then you're reading, and and then you, you feel, okay, this is something that I need to share. So you could have n number of main points and uh, also sub points, right? So be mindful of the time here you know, when you're putting together um, just be mindful of the time that has been given to you for example if it's uh, like let's take 10 minutes that we are going to consider for our assignment right um, presentation so you need to be really clear what you want to speak on right because some of the difficult messages are when you have those three minutes four minutes right? and what is that one thing what is that what are the two things that you want to talk about when you have one hour, it's like you can you can talk about weather, this, uh, you know, what you had for breakfast, everything, and then you can still, you know, uh, share. Uh, but then when you have limited time, because whatever you're saying has to be impactful, it has to be that one thing or those three things that you want to talk about, right? So be mindful of that. So, um, for example, this 10 minutes thing. So you be mindful of that. What are those things about the title? What is it that I... I just I can't talk about everything. Uh, it's practically impossible. I can't talk about everything that people need to know about the subject. But today, what can I emphasize? What is this? What is it that God wants me to you know highlight or em emphasize? Underline these three things. So that, it's just come to that, right? Okay. So uh, an outline helps us organize our thoughts, uh, gives it definite structure. And so there is a logical sequence okay, when you have an outline. Now, I've, you know, I've heard people without an outline also, right? And, um, and I've been blessed, really, completely blessed, because each point is some random point. I don't know if you've heard uh, you know, any message like that. Each point, is, it's like they're taking a walk. You're going, taking a walk in the garden. And then suddenly they say, hey, look at that bird. Have you seen that bird? Okay, come, let's go further. Look at that tree. Have you seen that tree? You know, it's like a journey of discovery. You know, it's like you're just walking in the garden, walking along with them, and then uh, it's one point after another point, one revelation after another revelation, and and then the walk comes to an end. And you're blessed with a lot of revelation. You know, you're edified in the spirit. Uh, it's like, wow, I received so much today, right? So it can happen that way also. Um, but you need to be careful, you know, because it can also, people can also go away saying, what? I know that person said a lot of nice things, but what did he actually say? Nothing is, you know, staying because uh, we did not use any methods to help people retain that, right? Um, what they said, what you said. So, um, Keep the attention, it, an outline helps us to keep our attention focus on the message, on the passage of scripture, helps us to communicate it, um, and also serves the dominant uh, big idea. Okay, So the, uh, the outline is the blueprint. It's like the blueprint. Like when you're building something, uh, constructing uh, uh, maybe a house or a hall or something, you have a blueprint. Okay, this is where the window goes, this is where the doors go, um, this is where um, this room, particular room is, this is where the, you know, so it's a blueprint. It shows you exactly where things are and it gives a clear picture. And, uh, you know, so so it helps you as a speaker to communicate things well. It It, it helps you to flow from one place to another to another place um, uh, when you have the outline. Okay. So also, the thing is that um, um, to be open, right? to be flexible um, to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. 
you know you have the outline so the outline should not be so you know at least in our minds you know uh, our uh, the way we look at the outline should not be so watertight that there's no place for there's no place for god you know it's so structured it's so the thing that is it god you know if you want to say anything else uh, i'm sorry you'll have to wait till next time <laughs> you know it cannot be so uh, inflexible and rigid okay so you give some space okay god what is it you know you have the freedom uh, you know we have received everything from him right even everything all the thoughts and uh, all the points and everything so he has a freedom right? and the lord will surprise us sometimes so um, he has a freedom to do that move and, and shift things around uh, and sometimes you know the emphasis on is on the third point you're just staying there but you feel the anointing you feel uh, the presence of god so strong in that one particular thing okay and maybe you can move on faster the other points but the third point is where you feel that god is actually doing a work right in the audience and he's really emphasizing and bringing it home to the audience right and so you stay don't fight stay and maybe you, you just might have to mention the other points um, but but to discern it well it's not like you like that third point so much or you like you know that story that you always wanted to share about that third point so much that you're hanging in there right you it's it's because you know you you really feel that um, god wants you to stay there and uh, you know spend time on that third point right okay so uh, main points sub points we looked at that uh, it helps to present the truth systematically logically um, so uh, here's the thing you know never arrange an outline and then try to get a passage and try to get a topic and then you know somehow push and pull and fit it into that right stretch it into that okay uh, some more practical things uh, outline is like the skeleton of the sermon it helps you to uh, it gives shape it gives structure uh, to the whole body of the message right um, unity order and progress uh, it should exhibit um, so uh, the thing is it should help us to line up all the points on the subject and give us that continuity okay um, originality is is good when you're outlining uh, you know you will, there are you know nowadays you know you see there's so many outlines so many message outlines and then you know in, even in our example we shared right there are many examples that we have seen so far about a message um, but you you know it's it's up to us to really wait on god and uh, it's not like we cannot look at other messages and and learn from borrow from you know uh, other messages learn from other messages and and maybe the lord wants to share some of that as well but but really you be sure right you you wait and see okay god what is it that you want me to right, share right um okay so that is about the uh, the outline um, the the outline that we are going to put together as the message Okay, so you have points, you have sub points um, in, as the out, in the outline. Okay, so we've looked at the topic, we've looked at the title, we've looked at the proposition, the big idea, we've looked at the transitional or the interrogative uh, sentence that helps us to transition from the big idea, from the proposition to the outline of the message. Okay, um, so in the message, now as we are talking about a main point or any sub point, it is good it is helpful if we can help illustrate it okay so when we say illustration it is to bring focus or bring explanation uh, make it clear uh, whatever statement that you're making okay so you you give uh, maybe a life example uh, for example and then you you state a life example you know, i mean you state uh, uh, maybe an anecdote, maybe a story to bring home that particular point. Okay, maybe an observation. Okay, this is what I saw and, and then it relates to that particular point and you're explaining it. So illustration is just a picture, you know. When you say illustrate, it's a picture. It's 
is a you see something and it's it's clear and uh, an illustration to should help us in that okay um, so the thing here are some guidelines for illustrations also okay illustrations should explain and clarify the truth okay so if illustration is a good story but it's not really explaining the truth then we should drop it okay it just remains a nice story but it's in no way connected to the truth sometimes that happens right we uh, we just think oh maybe i should just share the story and then you share the story and then you're wondering oh now <laughs> i don't see the connection right um, and the audience is also wondering where is the connection he shared the story where is the connection between the story and the point you know maybe it had something but um, the audience is also confused so it should help illustrate the truth that's the point of using um, the other thing. so it should help nail down the truth impressively illustrations also help our memory okay the lord jesus used illustrations right um, what kind of illustrations did he use anyone to share about certain truths he used illustrations sorry yeah yeah absolutely that's the first thing right so he used parables and you know that a parable is a earthly story which carries a heavenly meaning okay so the parable of the lost coin the parable of the lost son or the prodigal son so it carries a very very um, you know uh, a strong spiritual truth what is the truth something is lost someone is going in search of that which is lost and uh, when they when the someone finds that which is lost there is great rejoicing okay and when we when we look at how the lord jesus starts by these parables he's talking about the father's heart right so people were asking you know why does this person spend time with sinners why is he spending time with you know don't doesn't he know that they are all sinners why is he spending time and so in response to that whatever they were thinking in their hearts the lord jesus gives this parable the lost coin the lost sheep the lost son and he's talking about that this is the father's heart the father wants to go in search of that which is lost and there's great rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents so i'm sure like how we remember the truth today none of them would have forgotten till their dying day right every time they maybe saw a coin maybe maybe every time they saw you know they are always reminded of this truth and so also the parable of the sower every parable you know it carries you can vividly picture it the, the sower going sowing you can picture it right so illustration should actually help aid in that okay so um, it should clearly illustrate the truth okay illustration can present the truth without wearing the listeners so that's the beauty right so i remember you know going for a um, some of these short term bible colleges and uh, there the people were not really used to sitting and learning and so uh, especially post lunch session I had a heavy lunch. It's hot, uh, and everybody's like, you know, dozing off. So every time there is a story, you can see that everybody's eyes are wide open. Like they're all listening. They they want to know what is the saying, what happens to this guy. But every time we go back to the notes, everybody's you know back to their dozing off. So the thing is this that um, it actually helps uh, helps. present certain truth and it gets the attention of the person and they are not wearied by it like they're not wearied by some of the concepts let's say you're talking about a concept of uh, you know uh, maybe you're talking about um, what should i say okay uh, laying on of hands or maybe you're talking about ministry and kingdom principles and all that it helps to have certain uh, anecdotes or something that they can relate to in order to understand the concept right so illustration it should it would help uh, make the point without bearing okay uh, illustration should be understandable it should make sense otherwise there's no point 
illustration should be appropriate to the theme, right? Um, it, it should be convincing. Like you can't say something just for the sake of, uh, you know, having those those kind of situations. It should be real and convincing at the end, right? Um, and it should be used at the right place at the right time. Oh, that's very, very important. Okay, uh, is it used in the right place in the sermon and at the right time? Okay, fine. So we'll stop here. We'll look at this. There are some more, you know, uh, points about illustrations which I think are very useful for some of us, you know, who are who really want to share stories. You know, I have that kind of a thing, so I need to be careful. I um, I've made some mistakes here in this area, so I need to be careful. So we're going to look at some more guidelines about illustrations, and then um, and then we'll move on, right? Okay. So those of you who have not yet filled in that uh, sheet, I'm talking to online students. Um, you can do that. Uh, E-learning students, please present your you know the sermon topic and title. Just put it on the discussion um, uh, thread, right? Okay. Thank you so much. God bless. See you again. Bye bye. Thank you, Pastor. God bless you.